Tack, Lori. <laughs> That's okay. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. You were a reporter first. Now you are a politician. You have good experience on both sides of the aisle. Having said that, I do not wish to rehash what I have extensively reported and written up without giving any room for misinterpretation. As you know, senior staff approved all my questions. With that one, everything is approved. I didn't want to get to this stage because I have high respect for our city manager, but I left with no choice but to get to this stage. I did my best. I went through every protocol one can think of. I was unsuccessful. With that one, the only person can convince me I'm wrong. If there is a no-nonsense internal auditor, he can tell me what's right. Having said all these things, I want to end, in fact, Ombudsman is waiting for this report, and he has all the information, and he's ready to issue orders. I don't want to go to that route. I hope Madam Chairman and members of the committee would approve a taxpayer request. It's costing not only taxpayers millions of dollars, but my time, my own fund. If city cannot afford to hire an independent auditor, I pay to confirm Shaker as a city representative of the taxpayers is right. I want to thank Councillor Aidan Johnson bringing certain things to confront me head on. With that one, Madam Chair, all I have to say, you have 25% of the children going to school undernourished. And today's article, one in five, is pay below living age. Here we are, we are living in a luxurious world. And if you have read Fraser Institute article, you know what I mean. Every statement I have made, I have attached here as a backup. Anyone has any questions, I do. By conclusion, I have to say this. That is, Shirley Collins was a member of the city council. No one was here then. I never, ever saw any politician in my whole life. It, when I made the remuneration and conference statement, I didn't even see the politician. I handed them to the receptionist before it went to the media. It's very easy to get them into trouble, but I didn't want that one. During my presentation to the receptionist, Shirley Collins asked me, are you shaker? Yes, I am. And come on in, let me have a talk with you. And Shirley Collins told me, you know, as a single mother, Raising two children is very difficult. Here we are. We are sitting in here with a generous benefits everything. And it's time to cut our expenditure. You don't have revenue problem. You have expenditure problem. I stand by that. And also, I got a lot more things to tell you. Fraser Institute survey, if you have read it, you know exactly what I mean. All other municipalities are examining ways and means to cut the expenditure. In the city of Hamilton, I haven't seen anything. Nothing. I can tell you millions of dollars can be saved. And it is time, with the wishes of this committee and the city council, to come to grip with the police of accounting transaction. Not operations. Police accounting, it goes. If that internal auditor says, Shekhar, you're wrong, I come here and publicly apologize to you. He's a nonsense internal auditor, for which Chris Murray should be proud of it. That's all I have to say, Madam Chair. If you have any questions, I would be delighted to answer. Thank you, Shekhar. And we do have one question, Councillor Johnson. 
Thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, Shaker is a constituent from Ward 1, and I've had the opportunity to have some uh, very interesting and valuable conversations with Shaker uh, since my election about his various concerns. I've also had the opportunity to dialogue with several different members of city staff about Shaker's concerns and their response. And I know that um, at least one staff person today is, is prepped to give a response to the, the letter and the concerns that Shaker has specifically brought forward today. Um, forgive me, I'm unclear as to which staff member is prepped to respond. Um, I know there are a few who are qualified, but I'm wondering which one would like to take the stab. And who would like to speak to this? Mr. Murray or? So through you, Madam Chair, I'm not familiar with who it is that uh, you're referring to as to is per... Nor I, I, I it was a conversation uh, over a number of weeks as to uh, exactly who would respond and how. And I'm sorry, I, I didn't have the chance to follow up with exactly who to turn to in this moment. Perhaps Lisa? So through the chair to the councillor, there are a number of issues covered in the package and the councillor has been raising them. Uh, if we were to focus on them, there's the component of access to information. So Lisa is here to speak to that. And then the request as it relates to auditing of the police service, that would be Charles. So I would like to hear from uh, whichever member of staff has uh, feedback to give to help us understand um, basically the existing staff concerns and responses um, in light of what Shaker has brought forward and, and any relevant next steps, if, if any. Lisa, and if would staff you, has no response, that's a that's Lisa, a, would you a like to speak also. to this? Uh, I as well will just say in general, um, I'm not necessarily prepared to speak to an item. I'm here to answer any questions. Uh, but, um, um, it, you know, in general, if, I, if I'm asked any questions uh, specifically with regards to a uh, request filed under the Municipal Freedom of Information and Privacy Act, then uh, I would suggest that we would have to uh, go in camera for that. Um, as it's required, it's a non-discretionary um, clause. Thank you, Lisa. Councillor? Well, um, I'm, I'm trying to figure out the, the most responsible next step to take, and I'm thinking it may be to request a confidential report from staff in light of what we've heard and read from Shaker, which can be discussed in camera uh, at the relevant time. Um, Councillor, would you like to make a motion perhaps? I, that we just... uh, seeing no uh, okay. objections or negative concerns from colleagues on the row, yes, I okay. would. And the if, motion if would be, or direction to, count, if I may, direction to staff to come back in a confidential if in necessary. camera, I if mean, necessary. Confidential report if necessary or non-confidential if that's appropriate, whichever. Um, just with, re with, with comments regarding uh, Shaker's report? What we've heard today, what's in Shaker's letter, best next steps if any. What are Thank those you. steps? Can I say one thing, Madam Chair? Sure. At any point, have I ever requested personal information, RT4, everything to do with accounting record, freedom of information, explicitly state, ombudsman is explicitly stated. The only thing I have, I have received a ruling regarding police, uh, former deputy chief on $28,000. That one, section 53, subsection 3, that adjudicator misapplied. And it is under appeal again. I don't want personal information at any cost. I don't want T force at any cost, only accounting records. And that's very clear. It's a public information. KPMG has done extensive work on Niagara Regional Police. It's all public. I haven't had a single problem with any police or municipality. Even as late as yesterday, I have received information from Mr. Carr, chairman of the Halton Board. I have accept city. Why? Senior staff approved it. Senior staff first said, we, you know, we. What do you mean by we? 
I have responded everything, as you can see in here. Every document is attached. Thank you, Sheikh. Thank you, Shaker. And, I, and if, I, if I may, Councillor Johnson, uh, Madam Clerk, do we need anything specific if we're asking staff simply with giving direction to report back? Seconded by Councillor Brenda Johnson, moved by Councillor Aiden Johnson. All those in favor? Carried. Shaker, thank you for your presentation. Thank you. It's a pleasure, ma'am. Thank you. Uh, may I please have a motion to receive the delegation? Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Brenda Johnson. All those in favor? Carried. Moving on to 8.1, gas tax funding agreement. We move to a report about the dedicated gas tax funding agreement. Are there any questions or discussion about this item? Councillor Brenda Johnson. Yeah, thank you. Um, first of all, I probably need to get a refresher course on the formula that's used that, um, that gets Hamilton this gas tax money. So, sorry, <laughs> uh, just like the weather, my mind is in a fog right now. So through the chair, uh, as it relates to the provincial gas tax, so this is available to all municipalities who provide conventional transit service, and it's based, 70% of it's based on ridership, so based on a municipality's ridership, and I think that's reported through CUTA, C-U-T-A, uh, the Transit Association. So using their numbers, uh, the balance, 30%, is based on population. What's transpired in the case of Hamilton is our experience has been uh, our allocation has not increased at the pace of some other municipalities. And uh, again, it's simply based on the formula where ridership hasn't uh, kept pace with other municipalities as well as population growth. So if I look at the GTA, uh, where their population growth might, have, might be in that five to 8% annual, increase in ours is at that 3.8%. 3, 3 uh, so again, uh, it still does represent about uh, $10.7 million annually, and that is uh, dedicated to transit. So it is uh, reflected in transit's annual budget. You'll see a, uh, a subsidy line, and uh, again, those proceeds are applied to, to transit specifically. And thank you, through you to uh, Chair to, to Mike, 70% ridership, 30% population. So 30% population, regardless whether you live in Sinclairville on Chippewa Road or Main Street, it is all inclusive, regardless whether there's transit available or not? Through the chair, that's correct. It's based on okay. municipal population. And it's also based on the census, right? So we have to wait until February, this grand uh, date, we're gonna find out what all the true census are compared for the 2016. So it could fluctuate, it could increase, because that 30% could increase because of the, uh, the population growth that we're seeing? Through the chairs, so two factors. Uh, it could increase if we outpace the average as it relates to okay. ridership and uh, population. The other change would be if, if the province increased the overall funding pot. So currently the practice has been that they redistribute the right. pots. Okay. Uh, but the other potential would be if the province of Ontario were to increase the overall funding allocation. Okay, thank you. And now going to the 70% ridership. This is collected by CUDA. So um, I have a couple of questions in there. Uh, number one is TransCab and uh, DARTS, are those numbers inclusive? So, so through the chair, uh, we'd have to confirm, I don't think DARTS would be. Uh, because again, uh, I think the focus is on conventional transit, uh, but again, that would be something we would have to confer. Thank you, and I'd be really curious to find out whether or not DARTS is involved. When you consider the ridership we have in DARTS, it is considered transit. It is, it, whether it's geared to a certain population or not, it's still considered transit. Um, the other thing that I wanted to ask you was, um, CUDA supplies the numbers based on is it just paid fares? Because we do have people who have, <clears throat> pardon me, who have bus passes, so they could be dry, they could be riding it all day long, and and theoretically they're considered a rider on that particular uh, bus. But because they have a, a pass, it's just a blanket. So how do we drill it down to find out whether or not that the ridership is actually accurate? So through the chair, uh, two parts to that uh, question. Uh, in terms of process, municipalities provide the data to CUDA, and so uh, I think the the information, and again, we would confirm this, but 
Uh, I believe the information that's provided is not paid ridership, but rather ridership. So in the case of the city okay. of Hamilton, our experience is very different because of our transfer program. The fact that we right. allow riders to pay once, but access uh, potentially uh, numerous routes Correct. over a defined period of time. So again, yeah. uh, my understanding is that ridership captures to the best of staff's ability that those transfer uh, those transfers as well. Uh, and then in terms of moving forward, Transit does have a uh, project that's underway in terms of automated uh, ridership. And so based on uh, that project and uh, a more defined process as it relates to capturing ridership, uh, we, we hope that we'll have better information in terms of reconciling what we've traditionally reported and as it relates to ridership. Okay, thank you for that. And and I thought I heard you say, regardless of whether they pay, so it's just ridership in, in general. So does that also include all the shuttles that we provide for the TICAC Games Festival of Friends, Winona Peach Festival? I know some of the shuttles that we provide, they're actually paid shuttles. They're not just, they're hired out. But these ones were not. These were all grandparented in from, from collective agreements or from, not collective, sorry, that's union. Um, but from, you know, our, our understanding with the TICATs. Uh, so are all that, is all that ridership also included? Through the chair, I'm not sure that special events would be included, but something we can confirm. I believe it's uh, intended to represent, the ridership's intended to represent uh, transit routes, so where you have a defined transit route and ridership on a defined transit route. But again, that, that is something that we can uh, follow up with transit staff and confirm whether or not those special events, the ridership that's provided, uh, to the patrons are reported as part of the ridership number. And, and thank you, because I also notice, and I don't think a lot of the population know this, whenever we have an incident, say on the 403, we have a, a house fire or a, an apartment fire, the HSR is there on the bank, and they are there to collect the people, and they're there to transfer them to where they need to go. This is all included in the budget, but is it captured as ridership? Because that shows that what the community service that they're doing for the community, and that includes the shuttles. So to me, that's a big that's a big pocket of ridership that we're not collecting, even though they're not paying their two dollars or they're paying their three dollars. It's still ridership. So I'm just hoping we can highlight that a little bit and see if we can put that in there as well. So through the chair, uh, I think I understand the comment is uh, if we can. Um, consult through the process to see whether or not there's a more robust way of capturing ridership in the service. That's something we can try yeah, to pursue. Thank you. Because I think we're missing out on darts. We're missing out on shuttles. We're missing out on, on emergency services. We're missing out on, a, in my opinion, we're missing out on things that, that are we've just taken for granted. We just know it's there. Um, but it would still, t in my opinion, help with the numbers a little bit because our buses aren't just sitting there idling all the time. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Collins. Thanks, Madam Chairman. And through you, just curious to know when we have the, um, the most accurate counts related to ridership. We recently invested in a uh, in new technology that will help us uh, count passengers on the HSR system. It'll give us a more accurate assessment of our actual ridership numbers. And I know we were phasing that in over time, so I'm just curious to know when the HSR fleet will be completely retrofitted with that technology and we'll have a, a more accurate number as to what our true ridership numbers are. So through the chair, I know that the project's been initiated. Um, we do have transit day on Friday, and so Friday may provide the opportunity to get a more timely response in terms of the progress of that project. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Are there any further questions or comments? Seeing none, uh, moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Vanderbeek to receive the report. All those in favor? Oh, sorry, recommendation? All those in favor? Carried. It is, uh, we have in here that it is a report, but we're saying it's a recommendation. And do we need to receive the report as well? And do we need to receive the report as well? No, okay, thank you. 
Moving on to item 8.2. Uh, item 8.2 is regarding FCS report 17-004 about the 2015 reserve report. Uh, Councillor Aidan Johnson. Thank you very much, Madam Chair. And if I'm interpreting the report correctly, it's a good news report. I'm impressed to see uh, we, that we have an upgraded uh, AA positive credit rating. Uh, kudos to staff for continued strong and reliable financial stewardship for the city. Uh, I learned a great deal about um, how our finances work during my year as AFA chair. I know you're in for an interesting learning experience this year. And, and I'm impressed with uh, the deep responsibility that I see manifested, and it's clear in the report. If I'm understanding the report, uh, we have just under 808 million in total reserve, which seems very healthy to me. I, I had a question that uh, is sort of a bit of a random one, arising from page eight of 10, uh, and it's about our, our future liabilities, very bottom of the page, uh, 24.8 million uh, related to future uh, kind of stewardship and maintenance re our landfill sites. Um, the open site is estimated to reach capacity and close in 2043, I'm reasoning. I'm not sure if I'm wording this exactly right, but the question in my head is, is that 24.8 um, dollars reflecting the costs we have to pay in the future in today's dollars, or are we thinking about money we have to pay in 2043, which I assume would be greater due to inflation? Um, as I say, a bit of a random question, but this question of the landfill site and future uh, liabilities sort of piqued my interest. Through the chair, good question. It is today's dollars. It hasn't been adjusted for inflation. So as the councillor points out, is, uh, it is a, a ongoing liability, future liability, and that number will adjust based on inflation and the cost of uh, providing that remediation as it relates to closed landfills. And I guess the kind of this paragraph in, in uh, future years iterations of this report will just sort of reflect our ongoing uh, st uh, stockpiling of money for this purpose adjusted for inflation. That's my so, so through the chair in future reports, uh, the reports would spell out what the liability is and what the strategy is as it relates to funding that liability. As, as the report identifies, currently there's a gap in terms of the reserve balance and that future liability. And as we start to realize um, the cost of the closed landfills uh, and the cost of remediating, we would report back with a strategy on how to fund that gap. Thanks very much. The answer is unsurprising and deeply satisfactory, and that's all I have. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Are there any further questions? Moved by Councillor Pearson, seconded by Councillor Collins to receive 8.2. All those in favor, carried. Motions. We now move on to motions. Councillor Aidan Johnson, please present your motion listed as item 9.1 on the agenda. Thank you very much, Madam Chair, and this is seconded by Councillor Collins, and I thank Councillor Collins that the matter respecting the City of Hamilton transgender and gender nonconformity protocol be referred to the GIC. And if I may speak to it, um, colleagues, I've sent out some emails in relation to this over a number of weeks. Um, some of my core arguments, if we really want to get into why, uh, need to be articulated in camera. I'm not sure we need to go in camera. I'm open to doing it if one of you want to go in camera. I can sum up the basic argument for this referral with matters that begin at GIC ought to remain at GIC, and I'm happy to discuss further if necessary. Thank you, Councillor Johnson. Councillor Johnson. Actually, I have two questions. Um, one is, when I saw that the speaker from 4.1 was asking for a delegation request, I was wondering, no, no, no disrespect, but what did that have to do with af &A? So where does that drill down that it follows under the AFNA? So that's my first question, and I probably should have asked it at the time. And the second question is, if this gets deferred to GIC, which we're hoping not to do because our GIC agendas are off the wall, would the speaker then be transferred over to that portion of the GICs because it's all part and parcel? So those are my two questions. First of all, why is it here at AFNA? Madam Clerk, why is it here? I could speak to the second question regarding the delegation. Um, if it is transferred to GIC, yes, he would okay. appear at GIC. I, I, I know the answer to... Why it's at AFNA? 
Uh, 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 Councillor Johnson, go ahead. Aidan Johnson. And I'm happy if a member of staff wants to supply an answer before I, I answer. So I'll. Yeah, that's what I. That'd be great. Thank you. Mr. Murray? Um, to you, Madam Chairman, I, I know there was extensive exchange between Stephanie and Councillor Johnson on this very matter and procedurally. Uh, and, she, and Stephanie uh, was referring to the procedural bylaw, felt that it, the matter should be first heard here. It could be certainly through motion um, uh, put over to GIC. I mean, we well know that this topic has been discussed uh, with GIC as a whole. Um, but it certainly was Stephanie's interpretation um, that it should start here. Okay, thank you. And through you, Andrea, I, and I realize that you seem to have a ready-made response. Through the chair, building on what Chris had said, the clerk had made the determination based on the line of accountability inside the city of Hamilton. And I think the councillor's point is, regardless of the line of, the line of accountability, be it through either corporate services or to HR, the topic itself is representative of the city as a whole and should be agnostic to which individual department it sits under. And I'm not intending to speak for the councillor, but I believe that's his, his perspective. Okay, thank you. And if I still have the floor, um, I guess my thought is, can we not as a committee hear out what's going on and then if at that time decide to throw it to GIC, then I think that's more appropriate in my opinion because I think that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to look at our GIC meetings and feel whether or not that it's, it's uh, appropriate to all automatically send it there when this is, if this is this committee's responsibility to look at this particular uh, topic. We hear out all the facts, whether we go in camera or not go in camera, and then at that time collectively, then if we decide that GIC is the more appropriate deciding factor, then I, I'm on board for that. Sure. And I'm happy to go on camera to talk. No, no. Um, uh, if I may, uh, and, and actually, may I hand the floor to you? Are, are there any further questions? If I may hand the floor to Councillor or the chair to Councillor Johnson. Oh, sorry, Councillor um, and Vanderbeek. Sure, no problem. Oh, uh, sorry, you're the vice chair this this term? Yeah, sorry, no, thank chair. you. My question, or it's actually along the line of Councillor Brenda Johnson's, I think we need to look at it here. If if, if Councillor Aidan Johnson would, would just bear with us, we have such long GIC meetings, <clears throat> we're doing everything we can to redirect some of the delegations and discussions. Is it possible to deal with it here, and if it must go to GIC, perhaps make that determination once the delegate has has made their presentation. I'm not sure how we would feel, how, how uh, council feels about that. Councilor Sorry, through, through Councillor Vanderbeek. Uh, thank you, clarification question. Are you referring to the delegation or the protocol or both? Through, through the chair, the delegation. I would like to see the delegation make their delegate, the delegate make the delegation here first and then perhaps if it's necessary, go to GIC, but otherwise it would be great if we could deal with it at this level. Councillor Johnson. Thank you. Through you, Madam Chair, the, as I understand the delegation request, the delegation request is in relation to the protocol and procedurally to me, if the protocol is discussed at GIC, then the delegation too goes to GIC. Councillor Brenda Johnson. Oh, if, if I may, if I still have the floor. Um, I don't think we've decided that it should go to GIC first. I think it has to be dealt with at this level first. So we've got to start taking things off the agenda out of GIC. And if we could deal with it at, at this meeting, and then if it's necessary after we've ha heard from the delegate, then perhaps defer it or refer it to GIC. I'm just going to go to Brenda Johnson. Yeah, sure. Councillor Brenda Johnson and then... Um, thank you. I'm looking at the time. It's 10 o'clock. We're almost finished. And that seems to what happens in a lot of the other committee meetings because our GIC meetings are 12 hours long because we seem to tend to shift everything over. So it's, it's humbly respectful here. I just think that maybe just to give us that opportunity to understand better whether or not this delegate and the whole matter should go to GIC, I think we need to deal with it here first. So that's my comments and I cannot support 9.1 at this time. Councillor Johnson. Thank you. Um, through you, uh, Madam Chair, uh, a question to the clerk. 
what is the normal procedural rule? Uh, is it not the case that uh, delegations on a particular matter um, are at the meeting where the matter is discussed? So therefore, is it, is it not the case that Mr. Enos's now approved delegation request would go to whatever committee meeting the protocol is discussed at, be that AFA or GIC. Is that a correct understanding? Uh, please comment. Right now, he's approved for AFNA as the protocol is before AFNA. Yes. If your motion was to carry, then his delegation would go to the committee that it's happening at GIC. Councillor Skelly? No, oh, I can sorry, take the, the chair back. Still, sorry, I'll take the chair back. Uh, sorry, the floor is still mine if I could. Uh, yeah. Oh, pardon me. You're the chair again. Pardon me. Uh, so my motion is still on the floor. Uh, I'm not taking it back. Uh, to reiterate, my argument for the motion boils down to matters begun at GIC ought remain at GIC procedurally, pursuant to our procedural bylaw. This is a procedural bylaw-based concern that I'm bringing forward. So... I'm pleased to discuss that further uh, and at length, but it needs to be in camera uh, because my concern, my argument is tied to litigation matters that are alive. So please, I, I, I do not feel a need to move a motion presently to go in camera to discuss because I feel that my argument is understood. However, if others wish to go in camera to further discuss, I am pleased to do so. My motion is on the floor. Thank you. Any further questions? Councillor Pearson. Thank you, Madam Chair, and, and certainly I, I, I respect the, um, the mover of the motion and, and trying to drive this forward, but I'm just wondering if we can, if the motion would be more appropriate instead of voting it down, that we hold off on it until the presentation for Mr. Enos at this committee, and then we can direct it. Thank you, Councillor Pearson. Councillor Aidan Johnson, did you want to speak to that? Uh, no, I would like for my motion to go forward. And I, and if there are questions about the motion and why I'm bringing it forward, I'm pleased to entertain those in camera. I will not be withdrawing my motion at this time. Councillor Vanderbeek. Thank you. Um, just in the interest of full disclosure, I would like to, uh, I, I will move a motion that we move in camera if someone will second it. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, Madam Clerk. Because of litigation, outstanding litigation? We could refer to the city solicitor for verification this is a legitimate reason, if that's a concern. Janice? Yes, through the uh, chair. Yes, these are matters of litigation. All right. Uh, then, Madam Clerk, do we then... Put a motion forward by Councillor Vanderbeek, seconded by Councillor Aidan Johnson, to go in camera to discuss this issue due to outstanding litigation. Will we do this now, Madam Clerk? Stephanie? Yeah. Yes? If, if the committee is in agreement, yes, we can. All right, can I uh, have a motion? Uh, uh, moved by Councillor Vanderbeek, seconded by Councillor Aidan Johnson. All those in favor to go in camera? Carried. Carried. Any opposed? Then the motion is passed and we will be going in camera.